Welcome back to part two of press on nails. And by press on nails, I mean nails that are already designed that you then glue onto your nail. I am using painted desert medium oval. Now word to the wise, something that I did not do or did incorrectly was make sure that you size your nails when they are naked that you're not sizing your nails when you already have nails attached because then you will size them wrong, which is what I did. These nails are a bit too wide for my nail beds and I had to file them down quite a bit. But next time I know, and what I did was I went in and I circled the numbers and put little notations next to which finger that they are for. I was up by one to two sizes on all of my nails and it was a pain in the butt to have to file, <clears throat> excuse me, to have to file and shape them after I'd already done the design on them. But now I know, and truth be told, I should have already known that before going forward, but we do with it what we can. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, this is the finished look, by the way. I do absolutely love them. I'm a little upset about this nail because it is noticeably too wide for my nail bed and looks a little odd to me, um, but the design came out really well and I'm really very happy with them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start off as if I was doing a gel process. Um, I have a few nicks in my nails, which I'm just going to fix, but I'm going to prime my nail. I'm going to put gel base on, and then I'm going to do a coat of Builder Gel. And that's just my normal process. Every time I put on a new set of nails, that's what I do because I wanna make sure that um, I have protection on my nail from whatever product I'm putting on it. So I will do that and get my nails all sized um, or resized properly, file down a bit. You also wanna make sure that you file the underside. You want a rough surface for it to attach to the nail. And that will also remove some of the tacky uh, product from sticking to the stand. Um, for the past 24 hours. So I'm gonna get everything all set and I will see you back here in a moment. All right, so my nails are all prepped. My other nails are all filed. I have some alcohol over here. I'm just going to wipe off the dust with a brush and then let them air dry. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to use dip, uh, dip liquid. And the reason I'm using dip liquid, uh, dip base specifically, is because since the nail is very dark, the chance is very high, and I tried it first, that the um, gel glue won't cure all the way. And that's, A, you don't want your nails to pop off, and B, you don't want to risk getting a gel allergy. And that's very common with people that do not cure their nails all the way, and I don't want to run that risk. I love my gel products too much. So I tried, to see if it would work. I cured it for 60 seconds, probably could have cured it a little bit longer. I tried it on my thumb. I used Triple D uh, Builder Gel, as is my usual product to attach uh, full nail tips. 
and it popped off right away and there was still a tacky layer on my nail. So I didn't even bother trying it again and curing longer. I felt that it was just better to go ahead and use uh, dip liquid instead. So I do have a tacky inhibition layer on my nail right now from using the Builder Gel. So I'm going to wipe that off. And now we're gonna go in with the uh, dip base liquid. And I'm using Manny Boss dip base. It is a little on the thinner side. You want a, um, a dip liquid that's a little thicker to, so that it'll fill the void between the nail, the um, attachment and your regular nail. But I'm going to get around that by using two layers. So I'm going to put it on my nail first and then I'm going to put it on the fake nail. And then I'm going to scrape a little bit of extra down at the base. Yeah. Be careful not to get it on your fingers. It does stick, obviously it's glue. So you want to press it down firmly and then really press it down onto the nail bed, making sure that the tip of the nail is secured, that the side walls are attached, and that the um, cuticle line is pressed down firmly. You wanna get rid of any possibility of air bubbles and you wanna make sure that the entire nail is connected. I'm gonna hold it down for about 15 to 20 seconds, and then I'm going to go on to the next nail. So it is attached at this point, but I'm going to leave it be. I'm not going to touch it at all. I'm just gonna move on to the next nail. And you can see how quickly that went. So again, I'm going to put it on my nail. And then I'm going to put it on the fake nail. Scrape a little bit off onto the cuticle area. And then press it down. Sorry, I just wanted to turn it over and make sure that it was the right nail because I thought I grabbed the wrong one by accident. Making sure my cuticle, or my skin rather, isn't glued down. And on to the next nail. So you can see how quickly this is going. I'm gonna hold this in this hand. very difficult to do the second hand. You see that? I got dip liquid on my finger and it's stuck. And I've got it on this finger too. Let's see if I can Oh, damn it, this one's not glued down. Okay, let's try that one again. Hopefully that one's actually stuck.
And now I'm just going to sit for about five minutes, make sure that the nails are completely glued down before I go in and start filing or do anything that's going to agitate the nail. So here are the nails. In all honesty, this hand came together a lot more smoothly than my left hand. I think it's because I did a lot more filing or not a lot more, but I used a different tip for edging down the side walls of the nails. So um, they're going a lot more seamlessly onto my nail and I don't really have to do much filing around the edges and down on the cuticle. I do want to get rid of this ledge a bit so I'm going to smooth that down and I'm going to use, um, gonna start with this one and then I'm going to go down to the cuticle carbide bit. So I will take you through the first two nails and show you how I do that. And then I'm gonna buzz through the rest. And then I'm going to go in with my hand file and sand down the top to create a rough surface so that I can go on and then um, do another layer of base coat and top coat. And the reason for that is I'm going to need to base coat over the bottom where it meets the cuticle line. And if I have a rough surface going into a smooth surface, then the gel is going to stick to part of the nail and not the entire nail. So I do need to buff down the entire nail. I also want to smooth out the free edge and get rid of these nicks from the, where I guess the nail was initially processed. And um, so there's like a little divot in the top. So I'm gonna smooth it and round that out. So since I'm going to be using my left hand on my right hand, I want my e-file in reverse mode. I'm gonna put it up to full speed and then I'm going to reverse the direction because I'm going to be pulling towards me I'm going to go very gently. I don't want to dig into the nail and risk taking off too many layers. I don't want to go into the design. I did a little bit on my left hand, so I went in with a little bit of gel polish just to take away um, or to fix the patchiness. But I'm just, this has a rounded edge that is not textured, so you can touch it and nothing's going to happen. So don't worry about running it along your cuticle. It's not going to do any damage. Okay, so that's those two nails. I'm now going to switch bits. Get up to B3, reverse the direction. And now I'm just going to go in to the cuticle line. And get a little bit more detailed, get that ridge the part where it meets my nail down a bit. And you can see I'm doing this in real time. 
obviously, because I'm talking. And I'm not talking like this and going at high speed. This is going very quickly. And there's very minimal shaping work to do. And now the hand file. I'm going to go with the corner. This is the smooth side or smoother side, medium grit. I'm gonna go with the corner in at the cuticle and just rock it around the, free, uh, the cuticle line. Up over the apex, constantly rocking my hand back and forth so it's a smooth glide. I'm not getting, I'm not digging into one specific spot and just going up to the free edge. Make sure that you're looking for evenness. There should be um, there shouldn't be any smooth, shiny surfaces. And you can focus on those areas a little bit with the edge. And then around the free edge in a smooth, mo smooth motion. You can switch to the coarser grit area for the edge. Push down the skin, make sure you're getting in between the skin and the free edge. Make sure you brush off the dust so that you can really see what's going on. There's still some um, shininess towards the tips. So I'm going to take down the apex a bit and get into that area. And now I'm gonna move on to the pointer. Same thing, going in around the cuticle line with the edge of the file. I'm not pressing too hard. I just wanna make sure that it's a smooth transition up the apex. And then rocking my finger back and forth. All right, I'm going to finish the rest of my nails. I am going to do a base coat and a top coat, and I will come back to wrap up and show you the finished look. And here we are once again at the end. This is the finished look. I think they came out really beautifully. I'm really so happy with these. Um, it's definitely a technique I'm going to do again in the future in terms of painting the design on the tips prior to putting the tips on my hands. 
Um, it was a bit of a learning curve in, ter in terms of obviously sizing the nails properly so that I don't have to do excess um, shaping and filing. The goal is to just stick them on and be done, not to have to do any shaping and filing after fact at all. But this is my first time doing it and I think they came out really well. I'm very pleased. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Ooh. I, for, for F's sake. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give me a like and a subscribe if you have any questions as to the techniques and the products that I used in this video, please put it down in the comment section below. I'm going to put all the information on the products that I used in the description box and I will see you in the next video.